least five or six years. I don't know exactly, but for okay. quite some time. Uh, a full member? Yes. And she's very good attendance, so she's, she's always there. Just like the affordable housing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that good. When we discuss the liaisons, I want to make sure your name is that. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just the liaison, it's a member. You as oh, yeah. a member. Exactly. You know, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Time again. Okay. Everybody ready to go? Okay, ready to go. Welcome to the uh, continuation of the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting today, um, July uh, 11th, uh, 2017. We opened earlier an executive session where we uh, discussed contract negotiations, litigation, and real property. Um, we'd like to continue with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wonderful. And as per form, is there anybody here who would like to come up for the public session? Any, any issues, residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions of their town government. Anybody up there? Okay, we have nobody today. All right then, let's move right on to the uh, consent agenda. The Board of Selectmen will consider approving the 6-20-17 Board of Selectmen minutes. Our resignation, the Board of Selectmen will consider the resignation of Ju June Korea Clark from the Board of Appeals. And ambulance fund gifts. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting several ambulance fund gifts in memory of Thomas McIntyre, McIntyre and Barbara S. Cerruti. And uh, does anybody want to break any of those three out? Okay, so uh, uh, Selectman Ted still would like to break out number three. I'd like to break out number two. So I guess we're going to be talking about all three. So uh, the Board of Selectmen will, uh, I mean, the Chair will entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, 6-20-17 uh, minutes. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Okay, it carries. Um, number two, uh, I pulled that one out. Uh, yeah, I just want to uh, thank June for her many years of service to the uh, uh, board, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a tough job, and uh, she had great attendance. Uh, I was a liaison for a while there, and the uh, board of appeals does a, does a lot of good work for the town. I just want to say thank you to June, and, and I'd like to make sure we get a, a note out to her thanking her from the uh, board of selectmen and from the town in general. Absolutely. So the uh, chair will entertain a motion to accept the resignation of G June Korea Clark from the uh, board of appeals. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. And uh, ambulance fund gifts, uh, Mr. Tedstone. Yep. So we're now coming up to a few months out of after uh, Tommy Mac passed, and we're still getting, we have almost $1,000 of donations there. But we also have other donations from Barbara Cerruti um, totaling, you know, close to five or $600. And, it's just nice to see, uh, I know the family of the Cerutis as well, it's nice to see when, um, when someone passes, when they do these, uh, you know, in lieu of, of uh, flowers to, to send to a local charity, it's nice to see something like this happen where, you know, I, I think that over the last few months we've probably put, you know, three or four thousand dollars in the ambulance fund. And, and uh, I just know that stuff like that goes to great use locally for us in Hopkinton. And it's, it's nice to see, not just for Tommy McIntyre, who obviously I have a, a lineage to, but 
Barbara Stewart and any, anyone else that that this happens to, to come to to be it's just it's great to see and uh, as a as a selectman I'm appreciative of it but as a townsperson I'm even more appreciative of it Excellent. and actually uh, chief uh, you're back there can you uh, you know can you in, in, enlighten the, the the town as to you know the what the ambulance funds uh, go to because you know we, we've been getting a lot of money and, and I and I've heard it's done a lot of good and um, it's just one of those charities for um, in lieu of flowers and such that uh, people can really make a difference so if you could just fill us in on some of the some of the great deeds that have come out of it sure well first of all thank you um, it's a it's a gift account and um, the community for many years has been generous to the gift account I thank the community um, there's people um, some of the major donations um, I don't know if you remember mrs. Peliquin uh, from down on uh, Front Street um, you know we had done a lot of service and built quite the community relationship with her and um, one of the big purchases we um, did out of uh, that between the gift account and her uh, big donation was we, we uh, picked up the uh, automatic CPR machines the Lucas machines they call them and um, these are like probably about twelve thousand dollars a piece equipment these aren't normal things that we get out of our equipment budget and um, we, it was cutting edge when it came out and that's one of the beauties of having like a gift account if I see something that has some uh, medical testing or some unique training that would be really valuable to the community I can go kind of talk to the police chief and the town manager and the chairman of the board and say hey I got this idea and mm -hmm. it's gonna need to involve the community I think that purchase of the CPR machines that was uh, about four years ago I think that's one of the most significant pieces of equipment we've ever gotten where you can really see direct results back to the community um, just a couple other examples are some of the radios that we get the technology and radios change quite a bit and you might have a multi-band radio that helps us talk to other communities or something like that and for me to do that through the normal budget process might take 18 months and technology can change and if it's really a special piece of equipment that can help us today gives me the opportunity to again talk to the my counterparts and 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 uh, do something better for the community so that's kind of how I envision it I haven't made a purchase yet out of the account but um, again when that special thing comes up we get the conversation going and um, I think the accounts probably probably approaching twenty thousand dollars right now so uh, thank you for everybody um, and uh, a lot of nice people it's a com to me it represents a real community program excellent Does anybody have any questions for the chief yeah. Well, I don't have a question, but I just have a comment also on the ambulance fund. And sometimes when these contributions come in, um, you know, large or small, they'll come with a dear handwritten note that says how wonderful the fire department was, how grateful they were. Um, usually the reason for these donations is in addition, if it's a memorial, in addition to memorializing the individual, it, it, it's because of tremendous appreciation and respect for, for the kind of work um, you guys do and uh, I was just going to share a little story that I heard recently I'm sure the chief isn't aware of this but I um, a few months back went to a memorial service for a neighbor who passed on quite eld elderly well into her 90s and uh, they told about one time when she had a fall and the fire department all came up into her um, kitchen and uh, they said how you would have thought she'd been very upset at this she actually enjoyed every minute of it. They said these these guys were so such gentlemen and yeah. so professional. And uh, I think she was always a bit of a flirt anyway. But um, <laughs> she she in her distress thoroughly enjoyed the attention um, and the professionalism of the fire department. Good story. It was a great That's story. Great. I do. I take the thank you cards. I post them on our. Um, in our room where we have our lunches and the crews get to see them and it's a part of what kind of gets you keeps you in the right frame of mind and service you kind of can get busy and get disconnected but you read one of those cards and you realize what it's all about excellent Enjoy the attention in you guys <laughs> and, and speaking of what it's all about when you mentioned that multi-band radio for the town you know, connecting the towns to, to the other towns I can't help but think of the last guy that we had doing the uh, the radios and sure. what a what a great job uh, he did and how missed he is and through when he was uh, 
memorialized. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the gifts that came into the to the town long before I was a selectman. Uh, there was a a long-standing guy that uh, that was in charge of all our radios, and uh, he's one of the another one of the greatest guys to ever go through the fire department. Happens to be Chief Slamman's father, and. Uh, and that guy could take a, a paper clip and a bag of lawn fertilizer and he could get in touch with the Pentagon and, <laughs> and uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, he, was, he was great and I, I'm, I wish I were selectman when, when he had passed and uh, been able to say a few good words about him, but uh, I wasn't and um, he's, uh, he's a guy that's certainly missed. And, but when you say that multiband radio for the town, I can't help but think of Buzz and, and uh, how proud he would be of uh, having you sit up there and, and uh, spout off about the multi-band, whatever. So, Thanks. thank you. Yeah, that's great. And I, and I just want to, uh, you know, encourage the uh, the community you know, in, in lieu of flowers, if they could, uh, you know, continue to take advantage of this and to, because in the in, in the grieving process to um, to actually be able to uh, put. Um, Put the money that would have gone to flowers to, to use to maybe save somebody else's life or or just uh, uh, make things make responses happen faster. But uh, I will update you if we are looking at a future purchase. Uh, I have a few ideas for our training area, and um, I'll keep you in the loop, and we can let the community excellent. know. Thanks for coming, sure. Chief. Thank you, Chief. Okay, so at that point, the. Uh, uh, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the ambulance fund gifts for, uh, in the memory of Thomas McIntyre and Barbara S. Cerruti. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimously. Okay. Street acceptance notice. Notices of taking. The Board of Selectmen will consider issuing notices of taking for the following takings on private of private ways. Cedar Mill Road. Cedar Mill Road. Oh, sorry? Cider Mill. Cider Mill. Oh, yes, sorry. Oh, my goodness. Cider Mill Road, Cranberry Lane, Cold Spring Brook Road, Pine Tree Lane, together with easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. Said taking to the final administrative step made pursuant of Article 53 in the May 1st, 2017 annual town meeting and the orders of taking adopted by the board on June 20th, 2017, both of which have been recorded at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds. So is there any uh, discussion for the, on those? By anybody. Nope. Excellent. I'm glad that we've uh, we really covered that one pretty well at town meeting. So the chair will entertain a motion to uh, uh, finalize the street acceptances of the ones. Oh, here it is, right here. Okay. Mr. Ted, sure. There, there you go. Today. Oh, good. We use little font. Uh, I move that the board of selectmen vote to issue notices of taking as contemplated by Mass General Law Section 79, Subsection 7C for the following takings of private ways. Pine Tree Lane, formerly Jerry Lane, Cold Spring Brook Road, Cranberry Lane, Cytomill Mill Road, together with easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. Said takings are made pursuant to Article 53 of the May 1, 2017 Annual Town Meeting, a certified copy of which was recorded on June 29, 2017 at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds, Southern District at Book 69523, page 540, and the orders of taking adopted by this board on June 20, 2017, and recorded on June 29, 2017, at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds, Southern District, at book 69523, page 532, book 69523, page 534, book 69523, page 536, and book 69523, page 538, respectively. Thank you, Selectman Ted Stone. I could never have read that font. So I agree. Obviously, I missed out on Cider Mill Road, so I wasn't going to attempt this one. <laughs> okay. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passed unanimously. Thank you very much. All right. Now, with the uh, online reporting tool, the board will discuss an online reporting tool and benchmarking tool. Mr. Kamalo, to enlighten us. Yes, um, one of the, the key uh, principles, values and objectives of uh, uh, town hall as well as uh, the boards that uh, we work with is um, achieving transparency uh, as well as citizen engagement. 
and one of the areas where we have put some effort in is finding ways to communicate with the public on the budget. Um, we know very well that when we talk budget, um, the language used uh, traditionally is not the language that people use ordinarily. Uh, and also, most importantly, um, the budget is, is very important to the residents of the town because they pay the taxes. And we've been trying to find ways uh, to help us communicate budget information, whether it's information relating to the budget development process, uh, budget implementation, or simply helping us hold ourselves accountable in the eyes of the taxpayers who, who support the budget. And over the last two years, we have looked at opportunities for, for moving forward this whole idea of accomplishing transparency, accountability, and engagement um, with regard to the budget. Uh, we have had discussions with, uh, with companies that, that provide the tools uh, that help us to, to meet those goals. I've also talked individually with uh, different uh, board members with regard to expectations. Uh, and here's where we are now. Uh, we've talked to a couple companies um, where we've looked at basically two things. One, uh, improving the visual presentation of the budget to the public. Uh, and we identified a company that we've brought on board uh, and we were hoping to, we were hoping to uh, have a big splash uh, on, on this project when we actually um, uh, publicize the revamped town website. So it's, we were hoping to package this release of this tool together with the release of the revamped website. Uh, and in my discussions with with couple board members, I also um, picked up that there is an interest uh, on the part of some town residents in understanding how our budget numbers stake up uh, relative to our market basket towns, surrounding communities, how well we're doing. And then most importantly, um, find a way to break this information down into components that people can relate to in the budget development process, budget monitoring, and also budget reporting. And thus, again, in terms of where we are, we have identified a company to help us with the granular presentation visually of the budget as is approved and implemented. We're now talking to uh, a company from here in town that specifically does work around benchmarking, how we compare with other towns. And I believe this issue has also come up in the five town meetings that uh, some of you have attended. Um, so that's that's where we are. I, through Mr. Todd, Sestari, uh, we felt it, it was important that we put this on the agenda to allow the board to have a public discussion. <clears throat> I guess you say that that's where we are. So, are we in the process of implementing anything right now? Yes, um, VizGov. We've contracted with them. We've uploaded our information uh, based on the town's chart of accounts. We'll be presenting that information as part of releasing the the town's um, new revamped how website. How did we arrived at VizGov over the competition. We looked specifically at a couple of things. Number one, making sure that the information that we present is consistent with the numbers that are contained in our chart of accounts. Uh, they, they, they clearly, in through their process, they allow us to transform the data visually via a link to our chart of accounts. Um, we, we, we don't have, let me restate that we felt that they were advantageous in that regard. We also, I think, as I reported, understand the desire for the benchmarking. VizGov doesn't do the benchmarking. ClearGov does. 
and that's we've been talking to. I actually met with uh, Chris last Friday to see how we could move that discussion forward. So the discussion, the, the decision with, in, in terms of moving with VizGov, in terms of presenting the granular information of the budget visually, was based on the fact that we could link it directly to our chart of accounts and we have control over that data. Um, okay. Uh, what, so, so say again exactly what was the criteria that we used when we were evaluating the two? It was a couple of things. I, I, I didn't want to touch on and, cost. And at this yes. point, so at this point you say that you're still in discussions with ClearGov. Are we open to the implementation of both systems? I discussed that at length with Chris, and he offered two options. Um, and, and because these are negotiations, I can discuss them offline with you, but he did offer two options uh, that we are considering. And in addition, he's going to forward me the, the costs associated with uh, each of those two options. Okay, um, so I guess here's, here's my thought. Um, from prior discussions that you and I had, I don't believe that VizGov is giving us the functionality that's, that's most important to me, mm -hmm. and that being really opening things up to the greater public so that they can see how we compare to other towns. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a good example, but I'm gonna use it anyway. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's not a good example is because I know that the town's implementation doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the school's implementation. But things like being able to compare, uh, you know, on, on schools, you know, how much we're spending per pupil. Um, and again, I know it's not a great, a great example. Um, but people, people want to be able to see things like that. Um, I think part of the value is also looking at the number of communities who are using a system. And I'm not trying to make a pitch for one system or another necessarily, but I think that you're getting more value as other communities also participate. It's, um, it's, a, bit, it's a bit like uh, when you start looking at some systems that do crowdsourcing. Um, the more people who participate, in this case, the more communities that participate, the greater value they all end up getting. Um, so I want us to be careful to make sure that um, we're, not, we're not shutting functionality out uh, because one might be less expensive than another. And I think, that, I think that this is something where because the community wants to see transparency, mm -hmm. I think that we need to make sure that um, somebody, you know, that, that people are involved in making a decision on what moves forward, or at least what functionality moves forward. So if we want to do VizGov, my understanding of, is that VizGov is relative pennies you know, for, for our budget. Yeah. And it's not, to, it's not to discount any taxpayer dollars that we're going to spend. Um, but you know, my understanding of this alternative system is you know, it's relatively a couple more pennies, but not much compared to our 80 plus million dollar budget that, that we just passed. Um, so I guess in the end, all I want to say is that I think that as we're evaluating these different systems, before we close the door on any of them or say that we're going to go exclusively with one or another, then you know, maybe, we should, maybe we should get a little bit more input into what we really want to, you know, have have open to the general public, understanding that yeah. anybody can get this information through public records requests and things like that anyway, but we're just trying to make it easier for them to get online, ask the questions that they want answered, and get those answers. Yeah, again, to be clear, we've signed up with VizGov. Mm -hmm. We are speaking with ClearGov to understand if we can address the, the benchmark, benchmarking functionality. Um, we're hoping we, we can make this work. Clarification. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. um, I heard you address two different functions. One was the way materials could be presented 
um, in a more understandable way, perhaps, yeah. at town meeting and forums. And then there was the actual benchmarking function where people can look and compare various budget items in various communities. Mm -hmm. um, are those two functions such that they need to be provided by the same company, or could one be done by one and one by the other? Are you saying that VizGov is going to do the, um, the first function, the, the um, materials sort of presentation mm -hmm. function, and you are looking at the other company for ha perhaps the benchmarking, or are you saying that whoever we decide upon, they're integrated, so they have, have both have to be done by one entity? At this point, the option we have is to have both companies provide some service to the town. Mm -hmm. In our case, again, VizGov made sense to us in terms of presenting the granular budget information because they allow us to use our chart of accounts. Mm -hmm. There's also the need, as has been expressed by Mr. Sestari, to do the benchmarking. Right. And we are suggesting that a clear gov be the company that does the benchmarking. So that's he has answer. given, yes. You, he, you could do both. You could yes. have his do one yeah. and clear go do the other. Yes. Because I, I have not had any chance to really look at what VizGov does, but I know that with the other communities that I'm familiar with through the five town meetings, several of them do use clear gov, and I have mm. looked at that, and it seemed like a, a, a system that could be um, easily manipulated to look at the types of communities you want, or the budget items you want. Um, it, it does seem to provide that both user friendliness and the transparency that I think townspeople would, would appreciate, but I have not been able to compare it to the other ones, so I don't know, but I, I was well impressed and based on the experience of neighboring communities that have worked with it, they seem to have responded positively to the system. Um, so my question is, clear to, clear gov versus biz or biz, biz biz gov. Gov. Does clear gov have the ability to do the, what Mr. Sestari is saying as well? As, like, do they have? Could we use clear gov to as one company, so we wouldn't have to use both? We could, although the having reviewed this extensively with staff, um, our, our, our interest is to focus on the chart of accounts that we presented, the information that we present to town meeting, mm -hmm. and present it in a visual form. We believe that if we went with a different company, we may have to move okay. the data. Uh, and that's why we, we, we initially said, just to get to the transparency, get allow people that granular visual uh, inspection of the budget process will, will go with what works with our chart of accounts. Yeah. Yeah, we have to finish this one up quickly. We've actually got to open up a uh, public hearing. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, that the townspeople get to see the budget. You know, we get the, we get the, the uh, full legal size sheets or the 11 by 17 some, sometimes. And uh, you know to try and follow some of those, you know, unless somebody's run a company or some, some other some other large entity, because we are talking an eighty plus million dollar budget that we're looking at, and, and they end up being uh, dozens of pages long of, of very small font. I have to take my two point five glasses to, on that uh, those days. Um, but, but you know, and and. Uh, uh, being able to uh, benchmark ourselves against other towns, you know, it, 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 I'm sure it would make uh, a lot of the townspeople a lot happier when they see, you know, how well our town is doing. We really are doing very, very well, and 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 uh, you know, I just think it'd be great to uh, get on the list with all those other towns so people can can just start comparing to us and say, oh, we want to be as good as them. Like I said at the uh, at the state of the town address. I want people to uh, hear about the Boston Marathon and say uh, that, uh, oh, geez, it's uh, uh, 26 miles outside of, uh, Hopkins, 26 miles outside of Boston, so. We, we want the other towns to be as good as us. 
right, exactly. through, the, through the chair, yeah. um, I would like for us to ask both vendors for a list of references, but more specifically, a list of references that use both systems. Uh, and then we should try to call uh, those municipalities and find out are they using both systems and try in a trial mode uh, thinking that after the first contract term they eliminate one or are they leaning that way or are they you know do they see different strengths for each and because of the price point they're deciding that they want to go forward with both yeah. we've we've done the reference checks on VizGov. I can tell you we may be the first town to do a contract with both. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know just in the last couple of minutes I found two towns that were considering having both, um, but uh, yeah. maybe they decided against it. Uh, so, yeah. but I'd be interested to see. I would ask them both if they can provide references of towns that use both systems. They'll know. Yeah, and in fact, we, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chair. Um, our IT director, Josh Grosset, is here, and he's done most of the lab work. He's the one who's, who's, who's contacted most of the towns, and he may know whether they, they, there's any town that is using both. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, but to my but knowledge, I, I, I thought we were going to be the first one. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, that wasn't intended to put anyone on the spot, but, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just I think it's worth asking them. Because like I say, they'll know. They'll know if any towns are using uh, both systems. So if you guys, if you'll excuse me a second, uh, Mr. Starry, Mr. Kamalo, um, we are up against the, the clock here to uh, open up a uh, public hearing for the Verizon public hearing and execution. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing in pursuit of 207 CMR 3.05, the cable television license renewal proposal of Verizon New England. Incorporated the purpose of the proceeding is to accept public comment, formally consider, and possibly take final action in approval of the proposed license. So, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, uh, if um, uh, would you, would you uh, people like to uh, hold on the hearing for a few minutes to finish this discussion, or uh, want to just? Pick this up, uh, um, I don't have any other comments. I'm, I'm okay, that's great. Yep. All right, so we can always bring this up, bring the, uh, the online reporting tool up at another meeting. Okay, so um, uh, let's just, let's open it up with uh, Verizon. Do anybody from Verizon here? Yeah, in fact, Mr. Chair, if 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 I may, um, by by way of introduction, identify the the key parties in this process. Uh, as you know, this is a process that has been going on now for perhaps a good three years. Um, I, I, I'm looking around and I, I see the great audience in attendance today, and I compare that with the, 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 the ascertainment um, discussions and, 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 and preparations that we held at the town hall. They were very well attended, and we received some good comments that then led to the ascertainment hearing uh, that the board held uh, about a year ago. Uh, and as I said, by way of introduction, Bill August is the town attorney, special attorney, helping us in the negotiations. When we started this process, we had a functioning cable committee uh, who were part of the process. We worked uh, strong, uh, closely with uh, uh, attorney Kate Fliegoff. Uh, we also involved HCAM, uh, the school IT department, the town IT department, uh, sought input from different stakeholders in town, which then led to where we are today. And again, by way of introduction, Bill August is the attorney uh, who has led this process on behalf of the town. Excellent. Yeah, come on up, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Good evening, Chairman, Board of Selectmen, Bill August from the law firm of Epstein and August LLP. I've worked with, uh, on behalf of Hopkinton, for I believe close to 20 years on uh, two uh, Comcast renewals over the years, the initial uh, Verizon licensing. Uh, about 10 years ago and uh, in the past couple of years on uh, this renewal process. Um, and um, 
as uh, explained by the town manager, uh, to whom I am very grateful for uh, working so closely with me and the committee when the committee was involved, uh, um, there, there was extensive uh, uh, ascertainment of needs in the course of this renewal, and the town did issue uh, a detailed report. Uh, most of the testimony and comment was uh, supporting uh, continuing the uh, Hopkinton Public Educational and Governmental Access uh, annual funding, uh, capital funding, as well as testimony for uh, providing um, some ongoing funding uh, for the uh, town, uh, apart from the PEG access, to have for some of its uh, cable system related needs. And we were successful in negotiating a, a generous uh, renewal license in terms of continuing the uh, annual funding at 5% of gross annual revenues, which is the uh, maximum amount permitted under the Federal Cable Act. Um, and then above and beyond uh, the uh, meeting the uh, uh, annual operating uh, needs as determined in the ascertainment process. We also negotiated for Verizon to match what uh, Comcast had agreed to in its last uh, renewal license, which was two capital funding streams apart from the 5% equal to uh, 19 cents per subscriber um, plus 0.33 per year, uh, uh, plus, excuse me, let me just get the exact figure, 19 cents per subscriber per month um, over the course of the license. That's matching the Comcast capital above the 5%, plus 0.33% uh, of licensees' gross annual revenues um, on an ongoing uh, basis. And those additional, the additional capital funding above the 5% is to be allocated as determined by the town issuing authority for either municipality or PEG access cable related needs. Um, the license is non-exclusive, as it must be under the Cable Act. The license is for seven years, which is as long a license as Verizon is willing to commit to uh, in the, uh, during the current negotiations. Uh, we did increase the number of PEG access channels. Uh, the prior Verizon license provided for two uh, community channels, and that was increased to match the uh, Comcast provision of three PEG channels, and that's very valuable. Uh, the license incorporates comprehensive customer service standards. Um, the licensee will continue to provide uh, 18 activated outlets with service to public schools and municipal buildings at, at no charge uh, to the community. Um, and uh, thankfully, uh, licensee Verizon has built out the full service area as required under the existing license in terms of uh, built areas. Um, and so we're not in a, the position of having to negotiate extensive line extension. We've already had uh, success with uh, the build out, and Verizon is continuing the existing footprint and um, is committing to uh, extending service in, in new areas based on its criteria uh, and negotiations. Uh, so I, I'm confident, based on my experience, it's a fairly strong, it's a strong license, and uh, we did a good job. Uh, again, I, I don't say this in most towns, but I, I have to give a personal note of uh, great thanks to, uh, to Norm Kamala, the town manager, because 
it, it was a difficult negotiation process in some ways because frankly Verizon is pulling back somewhat in its in its um, term of license. In the past, they would do ten year. In the past, there were clearer uh, line extension policies. So it was uh, it was arduous, and, and uh, Norm was not only always there for me, but in, incredibly positive and, and supportive about uh, just getting to the next step and uh, continuing and, and working through it. So uh, uh, as well as uh, your the attorney who was your committee chairman, I'm forgetting his name now. Uh, Ket Flikov. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, so there was some real uh, excellent input there. Um, that's my overview. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, that's what I'm here for. And we also have a representative, uh, John Harrington, who was a great negotiating partner, too. Thank you, John. And John's here also from Verizon this evening. Excellent. Uh, do you have any questions, Mr. Todd, or Claire? Um, <clears throat> Uh, I guess, you know, to me, this is a necessary evil. Um, you know, this is, this is one of those things where I question how much negotiating uh, power we actually have for areas where um, Verizon, uh, Comcast, and the others take advantage of the customers. Um, it irritates me to no end when there are plans that are set up where if in this day and age you don't want to have a home phone, it costs you more than if you do have a home phone in your plan. Um, it irritates me to no end where if I want to get an extra cable box and pay this company extra money each month so I can watch TV in another room, it's not good enough for me to install the box on my own. Uh, but I have to, if I install it on my own, I have to pay $100 you know, for a fee as opposed to paying them to have a technician come out and install it. There are a lot of things that irritate me about uh, uh, these, these, this particular utility grouping, I guess. Um, I know that they're struggling to survive at this point, in my opinion, with more and more cord cutters. But uh, in the meantime, in this transition period, I guess this is a necessary evil. And uh, you know, I, in the end, I, I'll, I'll vote for this. But, uh, you know, it's with regret. We are preempted uh, at the local level from engaging in regulation of, of rates and charges. Right. Part of the sort of, quote, grand bargain of the Cable Act is to have uh, local regulation in certain finite areas, such as the provision of the funding for the municipal cable-related purposes and the peg access in exchange for the uh, deregulation of, of rates for the most part, except for some residual uh, uh, basic service rates, which the state handles in Massachusetts, not the localities. Yep. Okay. But you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> And I apologize. It's no offense meant to you. I share some of your concerns. So, um, sorry, I was a little late for for this item, but <clears throat> I'd like to know if there's any type of um, consideration that we can give moving forward to seniors in town, people that might have a hard time affording cable. Um, is there any type of consideration or any, anything that we can do uh, keeping these people in mind that, that are on somewhat of a fixed income <coughs> that um, you guys can kind of... If, if I can handle that. Uh, come on up, come on up. Oh, sorry. Uh, again, I'm John Harrington from uh, the firm of Kirby, Harrington and Pinkett, representing uh, Verizon New England. Uh, your negotiating team did make an effort to include that in the agreement. Verizon has never, in the initial agreement or any agreement in the, throughout the country, um, engaged in a, a senior citizen discount. Um, uh, the, the feeling has always been, and in practicality, um, 
the competitors that do offer that, it's only on the very basic tier. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the application of it, and very few people take advantage of it. Uh, Verizon's feeling has been that just bringing competition has been able to, if not lower prices, has slowed the increase in prices. So it's a benefit to everyone across the board. So it's, it's not something that your negotiating team overlooked. It was something that was asked and Verizon has never agreed to it. Is it something that you're that <clears throat> they are steadfastly opposed to? Yeah, I, I mean it's just a, a business decision that they've made that uh, it, they feel as though by bringing competition and getting into the market, it's a, a benefit to every subscriber as opposed to the few companies that do offer a senior citizen discount. It's only on the very basic tier, mm -hmm. so that would be the you know the 17 channels that you get. And um, very few people actually subscribe to a very basic tier. Okay. So noted. Well, we're talking about cost controls. I think I'm just about just under three hundred dollars a month. And my father would be rolling over in his grave if he ever knew that. Uh, yeah, I remember paying that for rent you know, when I first got out of college. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. It is a necessary evil, as, as Mr. Sestari said. But um, I guess I should probably should bring up the uh, telephone poles with Verizon. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> all right, I'll let that one go. Um, okay. So, um, uh, is anybody from the uh, from the public want to come up and have any comments on this? Uh, Hard to believe there's no one here from the public. To, this place is packed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Kamala, uh, Ms. Lazarus, do you have any other comments about the uh, about this before we close public hearing? I have no additional comments. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the chair will entertain a motion to uh, close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Public hearing is closed. Okay. So uh, uh, any discussion? Yeah, what, uh, what do you want to do? Mr. Chairman, through you, just uh, when I was reading Mr. Kamalo's um, summary, it mentioned something, I think it was item number two, that uh, whether these um, licensing gross annual revenues would go to either the PEG, public, ac um, public educational and government access or municipal cable related purposes and that was to be determined by the Board of Selectmen. So that appeared to be an either or. The PEG is one type of an application and general municipal cable related is another and we need to make a decision on that? Not today. Okay. This happens during the course of or the term of the contract. Uh -huh. For example, there was an instance where the town was looking at uh, improving uh, its 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 ability to connect these kinds of meetings mm -hmm. uh, uh, to HCAM, and the decision was to fund some part of that process through through the town and not through HCAM. Okay, yeah. so there's nothing that needs to be decided either or tonight. No. With this contract, okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Titson. I'm good. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. With that, the uh, I guess the chair will entertain a motion to. Uh, uh, do we have a, a motion for this one, or just to accept the uh, the contract as is? Yeah. Just to, to be to uh, vote to. Uh, approve and execute the uh, Town of Hopkinton Verizon New England uh, Renewal License. So the Chair will entertain a motion to uh, uh, <coughs> accept and execute the uh, contract with Verizon. So moved. Is that so? Second. Any further discussion? What's the consequence of not executing it? <coughs> Mr. August? Yeah. <laughs> we would um, continue uh, informal <coughs> negotiations un unless um, 
a variety. That's the the most likely scenario for uh, the short term, um, as I see it. I would agree. Yeah. And in fact, we we as part of this process, we went <coughs> through that phase. Right. I mean, right. there is yeah. one risk, I believe, of uh, not executing and, and just uh, continuing further informal negotiations is that right now we are under um, continuation of the existing license after expiration by operation of an extent extension correspondence from Verizon. So that technically we do not have the full protections of all the terms and conditions that are in a license, even though we have correspondence saying uh, Verizon will operate um, under the terms of the existing license. We're under correspondence and not a license per se. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, you know, movements, there's a lot of movements in, in Washington and other legislative bodies um, to deregulate this and to deregulate that. Um, and we've had those um, cycles of uh, legislative deregulation <coughs> in the past. And we have every reason to believe uh, they will be recurring under the current um, circumstances. Um, and so if that were to transpire and there was deregulatory legislation um, in, a, in the past, some of the deregulatory legislation has grandfathered existing licenses that were in effect. So if we had an existing license in effect, we might have the protection of that should there be some deregulation coming down the pipe. Through the chair, uh, Mr. Kamala, were there any terms that we were trying to negotiate into the contract that we weren't able to, uh, we weren't able to get? I mean, the, the discussion regarding the, the senior citizen issue um, is, is one of them. Um, there was also the term attempted to get a 10-year contract, uh, and we got a seven-year contract. However, at this point, looking at what other towns are signing with Verizon, a seven-year contract signed at this point is advantageous to to Hopkinton, mm -hmm. uh, and also I, I echo Bill's comments regarding the likely legislative changes, uh, and we're hoping we're not guaranteeing. We're hoping that should the board be inclined to sign this contract, that the the benefits accruing to the community will be grandfathered. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Everybody satisfied? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm satisfied, but I don't know. I, yeah, I'm satisfied with the arguments. Mr. Sestari, I, 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 uh, I think I, I feel <clears throat> kind of the same way that you do with, um, with the progression of the cable and, and um, <clears throat> just kind of a, you know, quick question and just flat out no on that senior. Like, <clears throat> that to me would be something that, you know, if, a, if I was going before the board in town or whoever and I said, this is what I'd like and this is what I, I, I'm interested in, interested in, in talking about, <clears throat> and then you just said flat out our company is really not interested in doing well, it. And especially if you're on that end and you're saying people don't take advantage of it it's, and it's only the lowest tier, right. then you're not giving much up. Right. <laughs> I didn't mean to be curt in my response. I'm just saying that we've been in communities throughout the country. The company has never done it. Yep. Uh, so I, it's, we've negotiated the initial uh, contract that wasn't in that. Mm -hmm. And every community in Massachusetts and New York and Pennsylvania, it's not in there. You, yep. Right. Uh, right. There is <coughs> one, there is another, and, and let me elaborate on. Uh, the point uh, John uh, 
just made in terms of uh, um, it, it's not just Hopkinton that is not getting a senior discount. It's no, not a single other community. So we're talking about major cities mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really went toe to toe to see senior discount and, uh, with Verizon and could not obtain it. So it's, uh, you know, major cities with full-time negotiating teams could not obtain a senior discount. They have not done that anyway. So I, I'm not saying that judgmentally. I'm just saying that the, we there's almost no likelihood of our succeeding on that score where, where all the other uh, municipalities have not succeeded on that uh, particular issue. Another uh, 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 factor relevant to your question about what happens if, if we don't renew in terms of just continuing informal negotiations, which is, you know, makes me a little nervous because we're not under a license during that period. And, and the license has a lot of things which <coughs> look boilerplate ish, but they're important to a town, like the mandatory insurance requirements, uh, indemnification requirements, a lot of that small technical stuff is. Uh, uh, significant from a licensing standpoint, and, and there's a like a long laundry list uh, which I usually don't you know I don't go over during the summary, but those are uh, uh, you know we have a greater strength in terms of standing on those administrative insurance identification, uh, performance bond, street inspection. Uh, commitments to comply with various electrical and safety codes, we're in a stronger position to assert the intended benefits of, of those uh, frameworks if we're under an actual uh, contractual commitment. And then the other factor, uh, which uh, just occurred to me, uh, is that the uh, um, agreement to uh, of Verizon to make the uh, capital payments that uh, uh, Selectman Wright inquired about in uh, paragraph two of the summary, which are apart from the 5% a year that the 19 cents per subscriber per month and the uh, 0.33% of licensees gross annual revenues. Those two payments don't even begin until the license is executed. So there would be some monetary benefit <coughs> of signing in terms of the capital funding. Isn't that correct? Because we're not getting that funding until we sign the license. Uh, you're just getting the same funding that you're getting under the initial agreement. Right. right. But, and this kicks in that, that's immediately. Right. right. Okay. Upon execution. Okay. when he comes back and says, I do not recall. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right with you. <laughs> so, well, I'll follow up on your earlier comment about wanting appreciation for the uh, town of Hopkinton's work in the Boston Marathon. All I can say is kudos to this town. It's really become a, a world leader in the realm of... Uh, public imagination and, 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 and sports that engages people in the whole world. So really, thank you on behalf of all of us. That's really an American classic now. If people want to know where Boston is, it's 26.2 miles outside of Hopkinton. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and if I may, just a philosophical having a contract in place is advantageous to the community in the sense that if there's any, any issue of concern to the town, we can appeal to the contract. Without a contract, okay. we're exposed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're ready for a vote. Okay, for the Verizon uh, the execution and implementation. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? It's uh, unanimous. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. I'd like to thank the board and the negotiating team, Mr. Kamalo. Uh, it was a long process, and uh, it, where we've ended was not where we started. So, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Peter. Okay. You know, something like question with you every time. What? Are you the time? Did I get that? I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. 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 We're going to say, Mr. Tedstone, which we're right now, we're almost on schedule here. Liaison assignments. The Board of Selectmen will consider selecting new FY18 liaison assignments. So, did everybody have a chance to uh, look over their assignments? Is everybody happy with their assignments? Mr. Chairman, I had one question. Um, I was not present at the meeting. I think it was on June 6th when the Center School Reuse Committee was appointed. Mm -hmm. But I did watch the um, video afterwards, and I did not notice a Selectman's representative appointed. Was there someone appointed for that board? Um, I don't believe so. No, that's actually because we didn't... Uh, we didn't add that one to the list yet, so I figured there was something we could okay, discuss. So that, that should be added then. It, it is on the list. Oh, it is? I didn't it see is. it there. Yeah. Under the oh, other. there it is. Yeah, there yeah. it is. Other. Other. New. Other. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So new. And then I was thinking we should probably Still add on one to, uh, to the... Uh, uh, 26.2 Foundation, considering mm -hmm. we're, we're talking more and more about a um, marathon center, that maybe somebody could uh, take that one on, somebody that's uh, sports-related, somebody that came from the sports world, Ted Stone. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, haven't, I haven't spoken with either representative, uh, but I was wondering if uh, either you would be interested in trading Marathon Fund Committee or Mr. Herr would be interested in trading Marathon Committee for Youth Commission. And the reason I ask is uh, I've been the liaison to the Youth Commission for a long time and I think they do fantastic work uh, with the little resources that they have. Uh, and I think that they're been getting this and, and I'm probably speaking out of turn here, and I apologize to the Youth Commission uh, here and now because uh, I haven't spoken with them about this, but I'm getting the feeling that they're looking for somebody who uh, maybe is a little bit more hands-on and gives a little bit more attention than, than I've been able to give. And again, it, it's probably out of turn for me to s speak about it here. But I started, so I can't stop. <laughs> I have that same disease. <laughs> so, Margie, I apologize right now, and we can speak later. Um, but again, I, I think that I've um, been getting the feeling that they're they're looking for somebody who's uh, a little bit more involved, uh, as opposed to uh, you know just hey, if you have a question or want me to bring a message to to the board, let me know. Uh, so I'm just wondering if uh, if either you or Mr. Herr would be interested in swapping. Uh, uh, I know earlier today Mr. Herr was saying there was only one or two that he was really intent on keeping in this. So uh, yeah, if, if, yeah. Actually, uh, you know, if if you if you'd like a marathon fund committee, I, I'd give that up. But I, I just I don't think I can take on a another active one. Um, well, why don't I discuss it with Mr. Herr and also uh, do what I should have done before the meeting and have a discussion with uh, Margie as well. Actually, she's uh, we, we accepted her resignation at the last right, meeting. Right. Oh, really? She's she's yeah. off of it. Uh, I think uh, Tamoria <laughs> is the is the new uh, chair of that. Uh, that Who committee. is Tamoria? Okay, and she's just right down the street, so you can. Okay. I'll check um, any other ones? Well, I'm willing to keep what I've got if somebody doesn't want any of them. <laughs> 
you definitely have that all the historical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> historical oh stuff. Yeah, check, 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 check. Cemetery tanks where they all keep them. Yes, yeah. I really like having the Veterans Celebration Committee. I like working with those guys. Mike Whalen and his crew are. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's one that I, I really enjoy working with. Uh, There's a breakfast uh, this uh, Friday. Yeah. Uh, I believe if uh, if any of the veterans want to come to the uh, senior center. Yeah. Zero nine. Yeah, I'm zero nine hundred, yeah. as Hank Alessio would say. Yeah, I'm, I'm chip beef. And chip beef. It's a great. It is. It's a it great is. thing. Even if, if you I never appreciated that when my father used to make it for me when I was a kid. But <laughs> I love it. Now. I think the guys and girls at the veterans breakfast appreciate the fact that they're not having it while they're still in the service <laughs> now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a great breakfast to go to. It's, it's some of the great people in town that have done some great things and. I love going to it. I love helping out there, and, and uh, it really is a very humbling experience to go there. And uh, it's fun listening to the old stories too, because they, uh, as well as most fishing stories or hockey stories, they get better with age. <laughs> um, but it's a pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be bringing a crew from uh, Golden Pond again. That's we did the last one, and the and the, uh, the gentleman from Golden Pond just absolutely loved it. Uh -huh. You know, they, because they they're on as many to, sh to share uh, war stories mm -hmm. with, because they've all heard each other's a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to have some fr fresh ears. I don't always remember them though. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and this and this week's featured keynote speaker is our only, one and only, Fire Chief Slayman. Oh, oh, I don't know if I could miss that then. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, very nice. Well, you steaks. Steaks now. The only place Excellent you can get chief. a steak. <laughs> <laughs> now it's out. The word's out. Yeah. <laughs> it's on camera. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I'm good with all mine. If anyone, I feel like this is uh, the night of Halloween where you go in and you try to trade your Reese's for the <laughs> Skittles. <laughs> uh, but I'm happy with all my Reese's. Uh, I like the groups that I'm on, I've worked with them. Um, but if there's anyone that's unhappy with one or wants to get out of it. Yeah, and, and you know, this isn't the this isn't the end. We, have, we could always Yeah, I mean we can approve these. We can approve these and if anything, anything changes we can right, we can always do revisit. changes too. If you, you know if, if stuff has to be yeah. kept up on or if something starts to fall behind or if there's a uh, a board or a committee that needs uh, more attention. Mr. Chair, I move that the board vote to approve the liaison list uh, as stated uh, for fiscal year 2018. Second. Any further discussion? M Mr. Chair? Yes. The board still needs to identify who will represent it on the center school reuse committee. It's a liaison. A liaison, oh. sorry. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Is that in this list? Uh -huh. Yes. Is that it's blank. Yeah. It's uh, Brendan, you, do, you, do you want it? Did, okay. I, I would be interested in doing it, but if Brendan wants it, that's fine. But okay. I'd certainly be willing to do it. Excellent. <laughs> if Claire wants it, man, I, the, the less I can do, the better. I'm. Oh, geez, that doesn't that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Just saying that yeah. to the town. I can focus my the chief. on others. In front of the chief. Okay, so, all right, who's it going to be? Are we flipping a coin now? What are we doing? We flip a coin. That would work. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kamalo. <laughs> Ms. Wright, call it. Is it fake? <laughs> Here we go. Okay, Ms. Wright, heads or tails? Heads. Heads. Heads it is. Oh. Does that mean you want it or you don't want it? <laughs> <laughs> I said I'll take it if I get in. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Okay, really Mr. Chair, I, I uh, move that the board vote to approve the liaison list uh, as stated, with the addition of Ms. Wright being designated as the liaison to the center school reuse advisory team. Excellent. Thank you very much, Claire, for stepping up. I'd be glad to second that <laughs> move motion. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Any further discussion? Is there anything else? That we, is there a line? Any line that's missing yep. at this point? Oh yeah. But actually, I wanted to. I wanted to add one. I wanted to add a. Uh, as I said earlier, the, the it, it liaison to the 26.2 foundation, and um, and I, 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 I'm pretty sure I heard Mr. Tedson step up and say that he'd like that one. I'd be glad to work with Mr. Kilduff. Well, it's the whole it's the whole thing. And it, the whole thing. Okay, great. Yep. 
I'll be glad to take on the 26. I'm a natural runner, so it's. Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> now there's going to be some, you know, some heavy lifting in the, in the future because uh, if this comes to fruition, it will really be a great thing for the town. Yep. Sure. Okay. Do I, um, Mr. Starr, would you accept the uh, only amendment? Or would you accept the? I would. Okay. The second. Okay. Now, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Excellent. <clears throat> Town manager's report. With your permission, Mr. Chair, I will defer to Mr. Teston on the first issue. All right. <clears throat> per the Board of Selectmen May 16, 2017 meeting discussion and town asset naming policy, I'm formally submitting an application to the board to name the new DPW facility in honor of one of Hopkins' most distinguished citizens, Tom McIntyre. On May 16, 2017, the Board of Selectmen, as the town's executive board with care, custody, and control of the DPW facility, confirmed its support for its proposal to name the facility in honor of Mr. McIntyre. This marked the first formal step in the naming process of the DPW facility. During the discussion, board members described Mr. McIntyre as an exemplar of civic responsibility, contribution, and selfless achievement. Since then, staff and I have begun a process for collecting community feedback and input. Since Mr. McIntyre's passing, the board has received substantial public donations on his behalf, reflecting the resounding confirmation and affirmation within and outside of Hopkins, uh, within and outside of the Hopkins community, that Mr. McIntyre's life of service reflects the core values of our community. I'm hereby asking the Board of Selectmen to schedule a hearing on September 12, 2017, to consider the application and public input naming the DPW facility in honor of Mr. McIntyre. Prior to that meeting, a complete application packet will be on file at the town hall. The application will confirm Mr. McIntyre's significant civil contributions to the town and broad community backing for the proposal. Regards, Brendan Tedstone, Board of Select. Nice, Brendan. Excellent. Good job. Thank you. It took a lot to. No written. Thank you. So, uh, as stated by Mr. Ted Stone, I would like the board to confirm September 12th, 2017 as the public hearing date for the naming process. Okay. It, do we need a formal vote for that, uh, or can we just, that can just be placed on the agenda? With your permission, we'll place it on the agenda. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, the second issue, I was also hoping to update the board on the development at Town Hall. Uh, as the public may know, uh, Town Hall is now at 80 South Street. We did send a public service announcement uh, through the chair. Um, I've also been out there at the front desk to welcome the residents who are visiting the location, as well as to seek their feedback in terms of what else we may need to do to advertise the location. I can tell you, multi multiple times when I'm at Bill's Pizza, I see people still stopping by a town hall looking for <laughs> the offices. <laughs> so we, we will accept suggestions on what else we could do uh, to alert the community that we're now at 80 South Street. Uh, in terms of town hall, I am, in, I, I am advised that the repair work began in earnest today, uh, and as we have said, uh, we anticipate that this will go on until perhaps October, November. Questions? I, I took a walk through the town hall a couple of weeks ago, and I was amazed to see what a um, complete and thorough job they've done in gutting it and kind of bringing it up to code um, from where it was to where it is. I think it's going to be a, a great um, upgrade to the existing building moving forward. I, I think it's, uh, you know, it was a tragedy to see stuff like that. I know that we've probably lost some historic documents, but, um, you know, as a, uh, as a taxpayer in town, you know, the only thing that we're going to have to pay for is, as, as taxpayers is the uh, co-payment and, I mean, the deductible and the insurance increase. I'm fine saving five million bucks and, and getting a free renovation out of it. So, 
uh, on the Horribles Parade, I don't know if you saw the Horribles Parade, but they blamed the entire, the Elm Street float blamed the entire thing on you washing your hands. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and uh, not shutting the faucet off when you left. So I applaud you and I, I thank you for doing that. And, yeah. uh, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's great. And it's nice to have 80 South Street uh, available to us to use for such a spacious environment for the town hall. Um, <clears throat> but unfortunately, don't get used to that because you're going to be going back to the cramped town hall pretty soon. Did you hear that, Chief? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? No. Okay. Is there anything else on the? Uh... Yes, I was also hoping to make an announcement on the appointments of a of uh, a new town auditor as well as the consultant to perform the OPEP. Uh, actuarial services. Uh, we're working on the contracts and we'll make that announcement uh, at the board's next meeting. How many years has it been since our last one? Probably. Three, going towards four, yeah. yeah. I, I know we were one year behind. Actually, I did make a. I made a note for the last one. Now, how about that, the light board? Are we allowed to use that to announce that the town hall moved? The one that's uh, in front of the, board? the DPW board. Y yes, no, Elaine should, says yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it, yeah. it, it. You know, it is a scintillating and flashing light. I know from being on Zach and the planning board, they're not allowed to have any flashing lights for <laughs> for any advertising. But I think that this. I think that this should be. Uh, this could, okay. could trump that, and we should be able to do something there. Government uh, can always break its own rules. That's right. Oh, my goodness. No, but that's something I think could really help, because I, I, I noticed the same thing when I'm at Bill's Pizza, people still trying to get in. And the funny part is there are actually some people that, uh, I've, that I've, I know they're on other committees that are still trying to get in, and I thought it was very strange. Yeah. Uh, they probably go to the fire station. Yeah. Too. Okay. But the, I got to say, the new building is, is great. Uh, you know, going in there for several meetings now, and it's really good job. Good, well set up. The public can uh, come in and out of it very quickly. They don't have to go up and, up and down uh, three or four floors. And, uh, very well done. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, sorry. Sorry to take us back, but anything else? Future agenda items. I have kind of a comical one, <coughs> uh -oh. ironically. Uh, so uh, today, before our, uh, our meeting, we had an executive session. My kids came to it. My daughter wanted me to remind, well, my daughter reminded me that this year she asked me if I could make a selectman's rule to make no school the day after Halloween. So I told them that I would uh, <laughs> officially mention it. I told them that it's it's uh, it's probably not a possibility. But uh, what, what about when the board cancels Halloween? Oh yeah, well, <laughs> wait till you meet my kids. Yeah. Well, that, that did happen <laughs> several years ago. It's Chief yeah, that, Flannery. <laughs> that, that was awesome because we went around in the snow yeah. and got the Halloween candy, and sure. then we went the next week. Yep. Oh, that was the old Brendan that didn't necessarily follow those silly yeah. selectman's rules. It was a selectman. That didn't come from no. the selectman. From where I came from, it was a selectman. No, it yeah. wasn't. No, That's why we're making Hopkins and Great again. It was Next a, it item. Was a chief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Any... I've got a couple things. Um, first of all, I would like for us to have a discussion about the process. Uh, and expectations of the process on uh, looking at the uh, water and sewer rates. Yeah. Uh, I would like us to have a discussion of um, what, it, what we are actually getting from the consultants, uh, how much we're paying the consultants, what we want to get from the consultants, so that next year's process isn't as painful as it was this year, and so that we're a little bit I guess uh, so that so that there's more information and better information because uh, I think that the information that we had is uh, pretty it's it I guess the best word I can come up with is static you know uh, again I, I mentioned it during one of the meetings we look at what happens if we increase or decrease by a certain percentage and it assumes that we do the same thing for the next five years which isn't necessarily what we do in fact it's not what we do 
Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I'd like to have a discussion around that. And I'd also like to get a presentation from our director of public works. And I would like to, I would like for him to explain to the board um, how he does his scheduling and his prioritization of resources and how we end up with X number of people on this project, uh, how we can look back and see what the cost of a particular project is, um, and, and just things of that nature. Yeah. Now, wouldn't that show up if we had a, uh, a benchmarking tool and stuff? We could look into what different well, projects are. that's pretty granular. I don't know if I'd expect that out of the benchmarking tool, but, um, you know, but I, I think that we need to make sure that, that internally uh, that type of thing can mm -hmm. be accessed. It, 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 to your point, Mr. Chair, in fact, we have a similar tool for the facilities department. It's called Facility Dude. Yeah, we oh, have good. facility to do. Dave, Dave is spectacular. Uh, he was able to secure that. The schools also use it. Yeah. Uh, and then on the DPW side, we've looked at a couple uh, concepts, including even having Munis do uh, a project management module um, for the department. So if we. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in detail. Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, making sure that we have something yeah. that uh, facilitates resource planning yeah. and then also looking back. So we should know going forward, um, you know, who's going to be working on what. The day of, we should be able to know who is working on what. And then the day after, we should know who worked on what and how much the whole project cost us. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, it, it, again, it's uh, it's all that transparency, transparency, transparency that we that we're always talking about, and, and I think that's a, a you know a great thing that for people to know uh, where we are with the, especially some of the bigger projects, where we are in the library, where we are in the school, where we are in the DPW facility, and uh, so so people don't have to uh, watch us uh, every other week to find out uh, updates. If I may, Mr. Chair, just a clarification, Mr. Sestari, just what kind of management you're looking at. Are you talking about, as what Mr. Pacino just referred to, where we are on the various projects versus it sounded like what you were looking for is actual almost micromanagement of DPW I'm functions looking, on a day-to-day -day basis, and I don't quite see where that no, fits in. No, 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 it's not. I'm, I'm looking to make sure that... Uh, we have tools in place for our management team to do that management mm -hmm. um, and so that so that uh, we can actually do look backs whether it's from the financial side or whether it's the director of DPW so he knows uh, where where his resources are mm -hmm. so it's more for their use mm -hmm. internal use yeah. yeah and I'm interested in finding out what the process is and mm -hmm. what he's doing to facilitate that because you know, it's my belief that without any system, it can be a system with pen and paper for all I care, but without any system, then there's going to be a lot of waste. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to make sure that there's some type of a process. And I'm just interested. Mm -hmm. Show and tell kind of thing. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. All right. Mr. Kamal, do you have any you want to put on our agenda? No. <laughs> Ms. Lazarus, are you? Well, excellent. Yeah. Okay, want to make sure everybody's. Go set, Chief. Anything you can come for us? Okay, I just want to make sure everybody's. Uh, okay, uh, with this, the uh, the chairman will uh, look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and uh, hope to see you next month.